Hey folks, welcome back to the old jarhead where I like to try to blow up power stations. <laughs> well, today I think I was kind of successful. No fire, no smoke, but we definitely killed a power station today. So <laughs> stick around and I'll tell you what happened. A little while ago, I received the new Opus Exodus 1500 power station and I did some testing on it. I did a review on it. I mentioned some things that I saw that I didn't like and some things that I did like. And I had some questions about a couple things on it that I decided that I should really try and see whether or not, well, I could answer those questions. The first one was, how long does it actually take to charge the unit from 0% to 100%? Well, during my testing, I was unable to get it to 0%. I got it down to 12% and that actually took some work. Around 14% on the battery, it shut down and it gave me a battery low voltage alarm. I cleared the alarm, fired everything back up and ran it again and at 13% it gave me that alarm again. So I cleared everything and I tried again. This time dialing down my ceramic heater so that it wouldn't draw that much power, maybe 500 watts. And well, I got down to 12% and it shut off again. So the most I got out of this unit before it became a real problem was about 1,295 watt hours. It's a 1,488 watt hour battery, supposedly, but I could not get that. In fact, after much playing around, I drew off about 1,309 watt hours, but that was it. And at that point I decided, look, you're not going to get it down any more than that because even just trying to draw a few hundred watts off of it, it would continue to give me that low voltage alarm on the battery. So that tells me that a 1,488 watt hour battery, it does not have maybe 1,300 watt hours, or at least the programming on this unit prevents you from drawing off that last 188, 190 watt hours. Well, I don't think that's very good. I think that's a problem. Now, to be fair to Opus, this is an earlier model, one that had the GFCI issue. Now, Opus did send me a power cord that's a non-GFCI power cord. Okay, that worked. So we got it down to 12% and I decided, all right, well, that's all I'm gonna get. So let's charge it back up and find out how long it'll charge back up. Now, one of the first things I wanna mention is the documentation on this unit seems to be at odds with itself. I read somewhere that, that the normal charging is 400 watts and that fast charging was 600. And I think that was in the book that came with it. But then I noticed on the app that it shows fast charging at 800 watts. Battery charging input, which is really your solar input, shows a max of 28 volts and 25 amps. Okay, I plugged in a 25.6 volt battery, my XENY 24 volt LiFePo 4 battery, and I was able to get over 480 watts of charging, pretty close to 500 watts. That works. When I turned on my fast charge mode on the AC side using the app, I was able to get 800 watts of charging. However, if I tried to combine the two, while I did get over 1300 watts, it kept shutting down on me and it would not allow me to put in that almost 500 watts of solar at the same time it was drawing 800 watts of AC. Okay. So I left the unit charging on AC with the battery disconnected and at about an hour and 50 to an hour and 55 minutes, it hit 100%. Now to do that, it actually got to a point where it was ramping down the AC voltage quite a bit. And I thought, okay, we're down around 700 watts coming in and it was starting to drop even more. And I thought, well, if it's gonna drop to five or 600 watts, I'll plug my battery back in and see if I can get it back up to 800 watts. And it did work at that point. That means that though it took me an hour and 55 minutes to get back to 100% from 12%, I did it by plugging in my battery on the solar input port when it began to ramp down the AC voltage. So I left the battery plugged in on the solar input and the AC plugged in. I even tried turning on and off the fast charging and it managed to get about 800 watts coming in with both of those connected. So we got it charged up in an hour and 55 minutes. Now I'd love to show you that it's at 100%, but I can't because I blew the unit up, because <laughs> it's dead. Okay, I didn't blow it up. Blowing up is a little extreme, right? There should be smoke and fire and things, and there isn't, but this unit is dead, deader than a doornail, and I can't find a way to kick it back on again. 
So how did I kill it? What did I do? Well, one of the other comments I had in the review video was whether or not it had a regulated 12 volt port. The viewer said that they had heard that the 12 volt output, the cigarette lighter output was non-regulated. Okay, I decided to try and see whether or not that was true. I plugged in a 12 volt watt meter that I have, thanks to Commvolt, and I plugged in a 200 watt modified sine wave inverter, and I fired everything up. Well, that worked fine. It was only drawn about two and a half watts, no big deal, but I decided to try to plug in my little ceramic heater only on setting number one and a very low heat setting so that it would only draw maybe two or 300 watts just to see whether it would do it. Well, before the inverter kicked off, the unit alarmed out and it had a code, I think it was an A010 code or something like that. Now I have to guess that that was because of that 12 volt port. It was saying that's an overload or overdraw or whatever and it kicked it off. So I reset everything and I tried again two or three times. And every time I tried, it would kick it off. I tried a, a little sander to see what it would do. I tried a heat gun. I tried my ceramic heater and every single time it would kick it off. So I decided to put a fan I have on that only draws about 60 watts. So I plugged the fan in and I ran it and it was running fine. Then I tried to turn the fan up to see if I could get it to draw over 100 watts. And it immediately shut the unit down kicked everything off and I can't get it started again. The unit's dead, it killed the unit. So, <laughs> here's what I'm gonna tell you. I wouldn't buy the Exodus 1500 and I'm sorry, Upis, but unless you can tell me that you fixed these problems, I would not recommend this unit to anyone. Number one, if it has a regulated 12 volt output, I did, by the way, see it draw 140 watts before it shut down, well then it should shut that down and then come back when you're not trying to draw that power. Even if you do it two or three times, it should just shut it down and it shouldn't kill the unit. Number two, if it can take solar input and AC at the same time, well, it shouldn't shut down. It should allow that to happen. Or if it won't allow that to happen, it should just kill one or the other. That was okay. It didn't kill the unit. I didn't fry anything, not that I'm aware of, but it, wouldn't allow me to do that, not until it wasn't drawing much power off the AC side. Then I could do it and get the 800 watts. So those are just some of the things. The app is really kind of cumbersome. Now I've said many times in the past, I'm not real fond of apps, but you can only turn fast charging on with the app. Well, I had a heck of a time. I had to blow the app out and reinstall it on my phone because I couldn't get it to connect to the unit. And I tried everything. Once I blew it out and I messed around with the IOT button, doing what they said, hold it for five seconds, which didn't work, it would just shut it off and it wouldn't shut it on, I did manage to connect to it. And I was able to change the settings and things like that, go to fast charge or boost charge and all that kind of stuff, and it did work. And as long as I didn't turn anything off or disconnect from it, the app worked perfectly fine but I had so much trouble after disconnecting from it previously that I wasn't gonna disconnect because I knew trying to make a video, I'd spend more time blowing out the app and reinstalling it to make it work. So I'm not impressed with the app. So in conclusion, fast charge is 800 watts, but it does reduce the input wattage somewhere in the 80% range, 85%, wherever it was. And then it would take longer than the hour and 55 minutes it took me to go from 12% to 100%. But I was able to connect a battery to the solar input and get back up to almost 800 watts and get it fully charged in that hour and 55 minutes. But again, that's from 12%. If this has 1,488 watt hours, well then, oops, you need to fix that. Whatever, whatever happened here shouldn't have happened. I should have been able to draw this unit very, very close to zero, if not zero. And then I should have been able to plug it in and charge it back up. And at 800 watt, 1,488 watt hours of battery shouldn't take me two hours to charge up. I mean, if it does, okay, that's because you're doing some balancing, but it was clearly still trying to balance at two hours. It was drawing almost 500 watts at that point, even though it said it was 100%. So all in all, folks, I would say there's too many issues with this unit. I won't be using it, but then I can't because it's broken. <laughs> so... There you have it, folks. I hope I've answered some questions for you about the Upus Exodus 1500. Don't buy it. I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out, folks. I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to put this paperweight somewhere else. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.